right? So we've just been talking as friends about architecture. Absolutely. And we've both, you know, got two specific architects we want to talk about. Um, was it Frank Gehry? Yes. Yes. T- tell me My how, love. how would, you just, would you describe that work? Um, so I would say he was a deconstructivist. So obviously he's got some radical freedom of form that he creates. Um, he has quite complex designs. Um, I definitely feel it's more of the postmodern era, um, as in it's fragmented, it's disjointed. It's quite evident in the Disney Hall, actually, in California. Because obviously they've got lots of sort of straight lines where uh, things meet, but it's sort of like it's quite squarish, but then it's also got lots of round, sort of more freedom of movement in its design as well. Didn't he also design a Guggenheim? He did. Uh, was it the second one that was built? He yes, yeah, so that was in Spain. Um, so that actually almost seems unfinished as well. So I would actually say a lot of his work seems quite unfinished. Um, almost like a brutalist look, but I actually think it's polished well, a lot cleaner. It's, it's almost like, this is going to sound unprofessional, but it's like a, like a curvy brutalist. Like, rather than having an access of like cubist shapes, he just has an yeah. access of like curves and swirls. Yeah. Almost like you've like scrumpled up a piece of paper and just placed, and just placed things it on it. There. Absolutely, it's really cool. I also think that that is just postmodernism. Yeah, just random shapes coming together to create this form that's so sort of futuristic, almost. Yeah. It's interesting because it feels random with Frank Gehry. Yes. See, I've been talking about uh, Bjork Ingels. Yeah. And he's almost the opposite. Everything seems like a every line is a well-informed line, and everything's there on purpose. Yeah. I think because he's very like um, focused in his work on sustainability, and because of that, it's very um, climate oriented. It's almost very scientific, so everything has oh, a okay. place, and it's like everything's important in the design. Mm. That's not to say he doesn't have fun, because he definitely no. does have fun. Like yeah. he built the uh, Lego um, he- uh, headquarters, mm. and you can see then, which looks like it's made out of Lego, which I know yeah. is the first thing you think of, but it's really interesting how. Yeah. But he I mean, he that. was more of a drawer, wasn't he? He was, more, yeah. He was, he was like, he wanted to be a cartoonist growing up. So ah, obviously, yeah. he's got an illustrative process, and actually, um, he also is designing the new uh, national library for Kazakhstan. Right. And if you look at his design process for that, he starts with a cuboid, like probably in some software, maybe Rhino, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and he just messes around with it, and then all he does with this cuboid is he's like makes it into a loop and then twists it a bit and that is his design and then from that has kind of the meaning of it like being the national library it's kind of this infinite like it should be like this infinite resource of wisdom and knowledge and like from that the reason is came out of the design yeah which is interesting because with Frank Gehry it seems like he knows what he wants the design outcome to mean from the start yes would you say is that fair but, yeah, absolutely. But like, even though everything seems intentional, sometimes it's not. And actually the reasons for it designs have come from the process. And that's that's really interesting to me. So you think that actually sort of describes his work by yeah. visually looking at it? Yeah. Well? And like he sometimes himself has just created a form that has perfectly suited the intention of the form. Definitely. Anything else about his work you want to say? Yeah, I mean... I do think Frank Gehry is sort of abstract. I mean, with Dancing House, it's sort of based on Ginger Rogers um, and Fred Astaire. um, And that sort of creates a movement. Um, So I do think the movement is a part of his Mm. language as an architect. Um, But yeah, uh, like I said before, the freedom of the curve. um, So it just sort of displays the whole movement. Is is movement like a theme in his... Like I believe so. Um, I also think it's quite sculptural, which would naturally make his work more curved, mm. um, more sort of odd shapes put together. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the whole sculptural form, I think it's quite evident in the Fisher Center for Performing Arts that's, show, uh, that's in New York. And it also, as well, they sort of just balances sheets of, it almost like yeah. sheets of steel, like you mentioned earlier. Mm. I think it's because like, his designs himself are pieces of art, like sculpture, Absolutely. and they are balanced yeah. on their own. Yeah. In a way that you could put them almost anywhere. Yeah. Not to discredit him at all, because yeah. they are obviously amazing pieces of work. But It's quite similar to 
be art. To be art, yeah. It's. I mean, it's. I mean, it's, he's an illustrator. He's yeah, a drawer. It's a, like, so like, so naturally, there's a lot of balance in his designs, yeah. but I think he often balances them with the site, with the context. Um, he's obviously got this amateur, amateur Beck power plant, yeah. which he then also made into a ski stove because it's such a cold climate there. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that he thought to bring balance to the site, like the site is so cold, there's a power plant there, and he's kind of like brought the full capability out of the site by putting a ski, ski stove yeah. there for people to use. And it kind of allows this utility that wasn't there before. So, so actually, like, I think that's actually completely sort of different to Frank Gehry. I feel like he produces a building for that purpose. Yeah. I mean, it could be used as something else, potentially in the future, yeah. um, as most buildings can. But I, I do feel like it was built for that purpose, whereas Bjark tends yeah. to... I think that's how they're completely opposite. Yeah. They are completely opposite in that way. Yeah. Which actually, um, like, in his projects, I guess you would say that they completely fulfil the brief of yeah. what they're intended for. Whereas with Briark, he kind of pushes it so that the site kind of is utilised as best as it can be yeah. and like the climate of the area. I do feel um, though with um, Frank Gehry that his um, his ideas sort of like disrupt the design within architecture. So it's not just a building that's that's a box. I mean, the building is like a whole sort of art form well I did yeah. mention the art form thing earlier but the roof sort of can become the walls and the floors with the walls and the roof. it can just become sort of one unit yeah yeah I think that's, that's actually similar to like a lot of what a big has done because um, I think one of the main that's the company that he sort of that's, yeah. produced was it uh, I think they've been they've been active since 2002 but yeah really been doing some big projects since 2009 and we're starting to see them being created which is amazing yeah. and obviously a lot of them are like sustainable sustainability focused yeah um, so that definitely describes his work yeah sustainability is important but it's I feel like it, it just credits him a bit to say that all he does is sustainable design because actually what he's doing is designing for the future and yeah. the legacy of architecture and how it's important to be designing for the you know the possible climate changes that are going to be happening yes He's Most definitely like, very climate aware. Very climate aware. But also very aware of like society changing in the future, you know? Definitely. So do you think there's any sort of consistent themes that run through his projects? Um, apart from this hedonistic sustainability of like humans being self-reliant and we're just using the Earth's, the Earth's resources that are naturally given to us, um, I think a lot of it is actually collective memory and human experience. Yeah. I think because he likes to utilise the site as much as he does, he's actually providing normal people access to areas that they wouldn't have before. Like there's a really cool project he had early on, I think it was 2003, um, in the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Harbour, um, where he designed baths that were like, like central heated baths that would run alongside the harbour. So people oh, right, okay. would actually go into the baths, almost like a sauna, um, as well as being an area for d uh, like boats to duck. Right. So you see what I mean? Like how he sees the site, he gets given this brief of like, well, we need you to design a harbour. And then he just pushes it further. And he's like, well, how can people use this? How can we add more freedom? Yeah. And how can people use the earth as much as we possibly can? So I feel like he definitely looks at nature and humanism. Definitely. Almost like I Scandinavian. Think, I think his main theme, personally, is connection. It's trying to connect yeah. people to the world via architecture. But then also looking at the future marks. in regards to like yeah. climate and, yeah. and how that's going to change as but well. Equally, I think Frank Gehry is an artist. Yes. Who creates pieces of art for the world that yeah. can be, you know, traversed and as architecture, yeah. equally important. I definitely think that that's consistent with yeah. all of his work. I mean, me personally, I do think all of his creations are a form of art. You know, he's got a mixture of shapes, it's busy, it can be smooth. You know, the, the pieces sort of hold themselves on their own. They could yeah. be in the middle of nowhere and, and just work because it's just a creative just a, a creative form yeah uh, on its own it's um, its own structure yeah and it's not a bad thing and it is all about shape and movement as well sorry about that 
<laughs> empty in the bins. <laughs> so... I mean, how, the next question, yeah. although we've kind of already answered it, really, yeah. is how um, how well... They work in the context. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've both kind of already touched on that. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think Frank Gehry... I think he does look at the context yeah. and there are some similarities, especially with Dancing House in Prague. Um, it's similar to the high blocks sort of surrounding it. Yeah. However, it's quite abstract. It's almost yeah. inside out. The buildings, well, not the buildings, sorry, the windows are sort of protruding on the outside and not, um, not rather than going in, um, sort of wavy lines. Although it sort of relates to the round building next to it, it's actually a standout piece in its own yeah. right. And I think that's most of his buildings. I think as a true artist, he's look, he looks at the other artists around him. Definitely. And says, how can I do something different? Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas I think with Bjarg, instead he looks at the untapped potential of the site. Yeah. And he almost, I mean, he doesn't ignore the historical context of the buildings around him. Yeah. Because history is very important to his design. But definitely looks at the potential of what can make the site the best it can be or at least yeah. the most tactile for humans. I feel like he's definitely looks into the future more yeah. than a history although yeah. he does relate it to the context because it he sort of wants it to fit in but then he does need to think about the future yeah. and he does that well yeah. that's that was his main sort well, of idea. Speaking of history um, actually a lot of what these architects have done has linked into what we've learned about at uni. I don't know if you yeah. want to talk about like the historical um, connections of Frank Gehry's work uh, to what we've been learning about. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, he is absolutely sort of a postmodernist, in my opinion. Um, different forms, it's quite busy. However, there are sort of smooth lines as well, which could sort of relate to a bit of modernism. But I do feel like postmodernism has that connection anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could possibly link to Brazilian architecture in regards to the movements, you know, sort of like dance movement, dancing house being brought up again, um, and the smooth lines as well. Um, also got quite complex shapes, like the Russian avant-garde. Um, however, I mean, it's not as brightly coloured or as harsh. Um, I mean, to be fair, it does have a red building um, called, well, it's the Museum of Pop Art in Seattle. That was actually based on... Um, a Jimi Hendrix song anyway so that could relate in regards to colour um, yeah I mean does Bjork Ingalls I think, um, have any influences in regards I'm to go I'm going to stretch it but I think yeah, yeah because um, being being himself uh, he's obviously coined this well, I don't actually know if he coined this term but he often uses this term called metamodernism um, which is this idea that both postmodernism and modernism have merit and have important kind of principles to architecture but they shouldn't be mutually exclusive they should not be separate and that there's there is this perfect balance between them both yeah. um, and from that he's actually often said that big his firm's kind of vision is this pra pragmatic utopia where a utopia the, yeah so like the functionality of modernism is there and for humans so like everything works best for us but also there is this sense of utopia, this sense of living somewhere great, which you kind of get from postmodernism, that you think yeah. actually as humans we can live somewhere beyond, visually at least, we yeah. can live somewhere really amazing and um, So looking at a different aesthetic. way yeah. of living, that well, things that could potentially change in the future, he definitely looks yeah. ahead. Yeah, he I definitely feel. looks ahead. And I think when it comes to the fun aspect, which we haven't spoken about a lot, but he is very fun in his designs. Yes. Um, and his videos. He very much has a yes is more. So like, yeah. if you ask him a question, like, should we do this? His answer will often be yes. I mean, he designed a power plant with a ski slope. So you just, you know, if the yeah. idea, if there's nothing against the idea, go ahead and do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, Bjark sort of being an artist, I suppose he sort of influences himself mm -hmm. in regards to buildings. But I do feel Frank Gehry sort of I think his influence, I, I do feel he was influenced by Cubism, especially for sort of Picasso, Beauchamp, Morandi, um, but also as well as Baroque sculptures. So actually looking into this, um, there is a statue of Benini's St. Teresa, um, which is actually 
in, well, it influences eight spruce tall building in New York. Yeah. Um, and I actually mentioned this earlier, the Museum of Pop Art in Seattle. Um, that's actually based on Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix song. Apparently he listened to it yeah. and then sort of found this creativity for this building. That's really cool. Yeah, and it's actually red, relating back to the uh, Russian yeah. avant-garde. Um, which was actually based on the red guitar of Jimi Hendrix, which yeah. I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. So I think he do, does have a lot of influences. And he's sort of a bit more sci-fi futuristic, yeah. whereas I think Bjark is definitely more realistic in he how is. That's, I think, the pragmatic side of it. Will, um, yeah. He definitely finds that idea fun. He's definitely very inspired by sci-fi and uh, uh, visions of the future. But like the uh, cool guy at a party, he has to kind of say but will it work you know yeah. and like but will the will the earth still be there like in that many years absolutely you know to to do this so it's yeah. very much asking questions about sustainability humans making the most of the earth but also you know respecting the earth and i think that is the best thing about these architects is that they've really been artists in their field yeah. and they've really they've really been sculptures and uh, you know, art inclined, which yeah. I think we both kind of relate to, and that definitely inspires us as well. Yeah, definitely. That's actually a good note to end on. Absolutely. So, so here's yeah. to um, yeah. becoming future artistic architects. architects. Yes.